Konnichiwa, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pillars of Eternity, a shadow play. Yeah, so when we left off, we had just survived a Buick after the murdering of all of our friends in the caravan by evil bandits and hut dwellers. And we found ourselves locked within these ancient ruins. So, let us explore shall we certainly now i've had a little bit of an issue with this i've already recorded this once before but there was a strange bug that more or less made it impossible to continue on so hopefully this time around we won't actually get it what it was was more or less a animation that was meant to play didn't so the npcs were locked up uh, even though the sound was still playing, like, I could still move the cursor around and everything, but, like I said, I was more or less stuck on that cutscene, which was very annoying and completely messed it up, so, fingers crossed we won't have that issue again. I didn't get that issue on my other character, because I've had to restart practically everything, due to a computer issue that I won't really go into, because it's dull and boring. That should be far enough. But what now? I do not know, Hilden. We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. Indeed, but what... Yes, but what happened out there? Mm, yes. Cecilia shakes her head. Windstorm. Of a kind they only get... Yeah, I'm just doing a normal voice for her. Of a kind they get only in Earth... Uh, Glanfarth. Not too many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. The grandfather word is Buick. To them, it is God's way of reaping the souls of the land that could not find their own way out. But they'll take a living soul as soon as a dead one. Still got yours? Mm, yes, I think so. I'm not completely sure. But who attacked us? Yes. Glanfathers. Those be the hut dwellers Odema warned us about. Look to be the fangs of Galloway. Who are the twitchiest of the lot? They go ruin to ruin looking for fights with colonists. Poor Dima. I think he half expected this once we lost the main road. Mm, but the Glanfarlands said we trespassed in their ruins. <laughs> I don't believe that. Odoma would never allow it, but as much as the fangs are hotheads, Glanfarland don't attack without being provoked. Either they saw something and got the wrong idea, or... She glances down the passage beyond. Or there's looters in here with us. That's not something we need right now. But what, what about everyone else in the caravan? Cecilia's lips press together and her chin rumbles. Her voice is faint. The wheels got hold of them now. She looks up. Gods grant them better luck in their next lives. Now the wheel is to do with the god of death, which we'll like, we can actually look at in the uh, journal, which we'll have a little look at in a moment. Hmm, but you don't seem to be too upset about all this. Hmm. Cassilia looks you in the eye, a volatile current running beneath her voice. Maybe you just don't know me well enough to know what upset looks like. And maybe I've seen worse too, seen worse and kept on walking. Because there's nothing else to be done. And because there's pe other people you care about who still need you. Let's, let's keep going then, come on. So if we look in our cyclopedia, to the uh, deities, uh, Barath, Again, he's the sort of person that is connected to the wheel. Now, when I first read about the wheel, I when I first heard it, I instantly thought of the Wheel of Time franchise, because that's such a good thing. You know, and... But that's one of the things I like about it. And here's about Glanf uh, Galloway, by the way. He's the god of hunt assassins pursuit wilderness and predatory creatures but yeah but like I said it instantly made me think of Wheel of Time which is a franchise I really need to continue reading about 
because it's such a good book. I think I got to like book two. I have all 14 books. A bit annoyed because as soon as I bought these books, the they released new versions of the damn thing. Someone else has been here. We should move. Now we should loot them. We should loot these things. Which is a good thing. Ha. You'll get stuff like this every now and then. Very simple stuff. And you probably think, hmm. What do we do with that? Well, I can actually show you what we do with this. And we have some camping supplies. Now, I'm not sure if there is a talent later on in the game that actually improves your uh, supply count. Because you can only have four camping supplies. I'm hoping you can get that up, but I haven't actually got that far yet. It might be something to do with the stronghold. You never know. Oh, we'll take all them. Take that and take that. Again, hold tab to see if we see anything. But we've looted everything in that room. So, let us continue. I'm currently trying not to watch my iPad right now while we play this. Because I've got Jesse Cox up on uh, on his stream while recording this. Because he's playing uh, but, uh, the Black Rock expansion for Hearthstone. Which I really want to do, but I don't have enough gold. So probably in a week's time from recording of this, I will probably pay for the whole adventure and then do some videos on that. Uh, ooh, what's this thing? A trembling, sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Nobbly elbows and thin ribs show through its scaly flesh. But you recognize it as a zurp. It watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged sighs. Now, different options. Uh, when I first actually came across this in my long play, I didn't know what the hell to do. But that's changed now, so you can sort of try and be nice with it. It's okay, I won't hurt you. Zura recoils, fingers still wrapped tightly around its spear. The creature cocks its head and approaches you, a soft clicking sound emanating from the back of its throat. The creature sniffs around you and finds nothing of interest. It steps back and resumes its defensive posture. Now, I could attack this creature. I'm not going to. Because, like I said, I, when I first played through this, I didn't know what to do. But there is actually an option that you need to have an item for. Now, those tiles look suspicious. Let's be careful. Indeed. So, if we go into stealth mode, silence surrounds me. Come closer. A little bit closer. You know, there is a trap. Now, there are three ways around this trap. Yeah, I know. I'm like sort of being more in depth than just role-playing through this normally but this is an area where there's lots of options to do now we could go the easy way in regards of disarming these traps which I will do with him mm. indeed ah do it with this guy actually mm. don't run away from the damn thing ah. You can see we're failing to disarm the trap. I believe that's mm. because I have no points in mechanics. Exactly. Who has got points in mechanics? You don't. You do, but I don't think you actually have. Pick, uh, what do you do? Let's give you another one. Try that again. Nope, not you. Indeed. Go away. Hmm? No, we're failing to disarm the trap, but you can actually disarm the traps if you've got a decent enough skill. And basically it's a good way of getting lots of experience. Hmm? Now, hmm? if we go down here first, actually no, we'll go up here first. Because this is sort of, it lets us get an extra like little mini quest, sort of... Roundish Ooh. symbol. I'm pretty sure I saw it on one of the tiles back Indeed. There. Now, 
We'll deal with this in a moment. I kind of want to go up here first. There is actually a secret up here that I never knew of. And it's actually kind of interesting. Quite a, actually good quest, actually. And you can see we're fighting Black Ooze here. Yeah. I'm not going to use my stag powers for this. Oh. Uh, let's use a spell. Let's pause. What do we want to do? Causes an icy wind of incredible power to arise, pushing back all in the area of effect and inflicting freeze damage. Which isn't good when my uh, warrior is standing right in front of us. Also, uh, found out that you can actually heal health damage. It's actually a talent. It's quite a nice little talent, actually. There's two of them. I'll show you the options uh, later on when we actually get to pick talents and stuff. You gain talents every two, three levels, I think it is. Uh, these are not cla these are elementals, so not really required. What I would like to see, hopefully in a future update, is area of effect symbols, uh, icons and stuff, graphics. So you know exactly what your, like who's going to be in the area of damage. Notice we switched over to sword and shield. Mm -hmm. Or sword and board as it likes yeah. to be known. Little graphic bug there. But we killed it with relative ease again we the more uh ex the more knowledge we actually get on each creature the more experience we're actually going to get so it's sort of like bonus experience I shall. and there's a dead body here with a pole axe which we'll take to sell later on What's that muck on the it's wall? It's ooze here then. Also, while we're here, I'm going to change this around ever so slightly. You can, it's quite a nice little thing. You right click on them, on these custom formations and change it around. Put oh. you back to that. Hmm? Let's examine this. A viscous black ooze, a viscous slick of something dark and tar-like runs down this wall. The shapes and bulges in the ooze suggest that something lies beneath it, but you cannot tell what. Now instantly my brain went to my own story, cause I've actually had a viscous black ooze written, so whenever I see a sentence starting with a viscous, my brain just goes, nope, you gotta go straight to that. Let's use our water skin to clear off the ooze. You rinse the ooze away, revealing an intricate relief of a man's face. face. The sunburst surrounding it has chipped away in places, but the details of his head, from the tight curls of hair to the ridges of pointed ears, still showcase remarkable craftsmanship. One eye socket is empty, a gem fills the other. Now, this is sort of like a... This is the mini Second. quest, more or less. It doesn't actually give us a quest, but I like doing it because it's a fetch quest. And I sort of like fetch quests. Now, I'm actually going to do show you all three ways. I've already shown you that you can start to disarm this. So, I'll show you the other way. Which is why we have torches. A curling symbol is inc inscribed on this pillar. An unlit brazier sits at its base. It could be lit if you had the means. So let's use the torch. Flames kindle swiftly in the brazier, winding their way upwards. Now you can see, here's a symbol. And if we do keep doing this... We will see the results. As long as you've got a torch in your inventory, that works. 
and you'll notice some of these icons have stopped glowing and in order mm -hmm. to sort of pass through it it's best to do it like one person at a time that's one way to actually get it get to the end of the dungeon but yes I kind of want to show you the other option and get some more experience more or less Ooh, we have this dead body he has a gem he has a crossbow never really use crossbows apparently they're very good I might give Zondas that he has a torch which we'll take a tattered journal which we shall read Let's see how much of this is actually read oh, not that much this small folio is torn in several places and blood has soaked into several of its sheets one later entry is still legible however I can't believe my luck a few rounds of dice and I've got my hands on a genuine... That's a Enguithan? Enguithan artifact. Fellow who had it said it was pretty, uh, pretty nothing, but as far as he's concerned... Yeah, he's not willing to go digging into some ruins. But if he's right about this gem leading to a hidden treasure, then that's perhaps worth sneaking past a few painted elves. I'll head to Salient List in the morning. Then it's just a matter of finding this relief he was think he was talking about. Hint, hint, take the gem, which instantly goes into our stash, and we'll take the book as well. I like collecting books. Oh, oh wait. And I <laughs> deselected all my characters somehow because I'm silly Billy. So if we run back up here, all the way back here. For once, I'm actually just drinking water, not fizzy pop. <laughs> I'm trying to cut back on the stuff, so I'm trying to drink a lot more water. More or less to help with the voice as well. Let's put the gem in the eye socket. The chamber begins to rumble, stray rocks dancing across the tile floor. Finally, a large section of the wall gives way. Which you'll see here. Look, we have an ooze. Let's go smack it. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, these oozes don't really do that much damage. Especially when they get like smacked in the face by flames. It's kind of an interesting thing, the whole endurance mechanic. Especially once you start learning more about the creature's health. Mm -hmm. Health stats is like, I have this much health. Or I have this much uh, endurance. And you can see here we actually get a cloak of minor protection. That's not the cloak, that's the cloak. And we have Ardra, which is an organic material, crystalline in structure, but shell like in substance. Ardra can be found growing up through the grounds in veins in many parts of Aurora. Easy to carve and manipulate, it is a favourite of jewellers as a semi-precious stone, and it is often cut more intricately and beautifully than other gems. So we'll take that, that goes in our stash. And Amethyst, we know what Amethyst does. It's a main staple of all mm. RPGs. Now, one thing I do like, this is a personal preference, it's something that sort of makes me a little bit happier, and that is, in most RPGs, when you equip a cloak, it doesn't show. However, if a game sort of actually takes the time to put in a cloak uh, design and sprite and everything, and you know, have it appear on the character with fluid mo movement, that's an extra point for me in regards to how much I like the game. Like that! Look at that! And it flings around. It's like physics! Physics! Actually, I'm going to put stuff in my stash. Uh, shift click to put things in. Keep that. Oh yeah, I did pick up uh, I keep forgetting this 
camping supplies appear here, not in your inventory. So I keep forgetting that I actually have some. I guess you have to, ah. I'll have to sleep and pick that up. And we'll keep that. That was going to equip it on Zondas. Oh well. That was a silly mistake. So let's continue back down here and I can show you the other option of getting out of here. I really should have set the timer off as well. I had it I had a timer ready to sort of go when I started recording, but guess who forgot to set it off? Yay! Wait. Do you hear yes, that? I hear that. And we come across a Skulder Whelp. These are ugly little bastards. But uh, we should be able to deal with this quite easily, even though he was stunned because he's an idiot. Though it's almost dead. Ooh, animation bug there. That's oh. interesting. Hmm? Now, oh. we get a scolder ear, and we get a piece of meat. Now that meat is actually oh. required for this guy over here. Let's talk to the scolder. The scolder. The Zerb sniffs around your pack and noses excitedly at something. It steps back and points to your pack, salivating and holding its spear out to you. Let's give the meat to the Zerb. You produce a piece of scolder meat from your pack and toss it onto the floor. Zerb's nostrils flare at the scent of fresh meat and its eyes dart between you and the food. It creeps towards the prize, shoving its spear into your grip and snatching the meat with both hands at the last moment. Its gullet quivers as it devours the flesh in noisy chumps. We get ourselves a Zerb spear, which is quite good because we can probably sell that. And we'll take those lockpicks. Now, personally, I hope that further in the game we actually get a Zerb as a companion because it reminds me a lot of the Cobalt that you would get in Neverwinter, Deacon. I absolutely love Deacon as a character, he was my favourite character of all time and I really hope we get a Zerb similar. Or if a future expansion comes out with this, okay. yes, it could be a shortcut. If like a future DLC or something adds Zerbs as a playable race, I would love to make a, a Deacon. Right. Oh. Let's examine the wall. A crack runs along the wall from the floor to the ceiling. A light gust of air passes through it. Now, if we hadn't picked up the hammer and chisel earlier, this option would not be there. We will actually use this option and we'll continue chiseling at the wall. After several long moments, you begin to see light on the other side. With one final tap, several blocks of stone shift, then tumble loose, clearing a gap just wide enough to pass through. Now this is actually giving, up, giving us fatigue. There are two stages of fatigue, as far as I'm aware. I've never let it get past uh, Major. This knocks down our defences, our accuracy and some of our endurance. So I think this is a perfect time to have a rest. We're we'll going to the stash first because I want to get this back. We'll put all this stuff in the uh, stash. Actually, you open the stash again. Replace that. Put that in there. Put that in there because we don't need it. Yes, I'm taking all their stuff off them because I want all the lockpicks. And a nice little camping animation. Now, I thought there was only one animation for the camping, but there is actually I two. Shall. As far as I I'm shall. aware. There might be more. I could scout ahead. See what's around. How can I help? Yes, you could. Silence surrounds me. Let's have a stealth. You can see a zoop here. Another zoop. So let us deal with these Zerps. Yes. I'm not 100% sure on if there's sort of backstabbing 
mechanics Certainly. or anything. But if there is, then cool. If not, well, we'll find out eventually what sort of other options there are. Uh, nature's mark causes enemies in the area of effect to glow with a pale green light, making them easier targets. Ooh, that's actually quite good. Let's drop that. Yes. Now that's actually a good thing because even if the creature's dead, oh, they still suffer. Like the spell still goes off. So that's actually kind of a good thing. Do you feel that? There's a draft coming through that wall. I don't hear any sign of that storm either. Good, good. No interesting thing. Hmm? Uh, normally when I get to this point, uh, Kalasia normally says that. So it's nice Certainly. to see Hilden actually speaking. And now we're fighting some spiderlings. I hate spiders in RPGs, I will admit. Mainly because they always look oh. so frightening. Especially when they appear to be Certainly. the size of dogs and cars which is always the scariest bit uh, quick save uh, Jesse's now playing he was so it's kind of an interesting yeah. watch every night every time I look over I really should play that more often. oh yeah I do apologize for sort of mentioning other things in regards yes. to Holy crap. You need to heal. Does that heal everyone in the area? Okay, uh, you need to. Hmm? Not you. How can you. I help? Blind strike. You. Hmm? Knock down. I kind of don't want Hilda to fall over. That was stupid. But Hilden almost fell, which is kind of a nasty thing. Now, ooh, the stuff on the wall. We'll take that. And let's go down here briefly. Loot this guy with a silly hat. Sadly, hats in this game don't do anything. I think you can enchant hats. No, you can't. Oh, that sucks. But yeah, they don't have any stats or anything, anything like that. So it's sort of a bit dull in that regard. So I'm actually going to save it here, just in case. Because if it decides to do the bug again, then I can just easily jump back to this. So fingers crossed, this will not crash. Let's continue. Right, fingers crossed, again, keep them crossed. Four figures stand silhouetted before an otherworldly apparatus, an ancient structure of chiseled ardra and metallic veins, inscrutable and ominous and looming like a silent observer. Standing motionless in their mist is what appears to be a human body colourless as stone or ash. The other figures gaze upon it with what might be contemplation. From your vantage point you are well obscured from their view. The face of one of the figures is distantly visible, framed by long tendrils of oily grey hair tinged dark at the ends, and a thick beard that seems to obscure all trace of emotion. His faded robes are embroidered with runic language unlike anything you have ever seen before and his head is crowned with a strange black headdress with two protrusions jutting out one on either side like the wings of some profane and malevolent creature oathbinder bear witness 
and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was, and regard it among your favored. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother in the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw? Step forth. And be assured of the great worth of your life's course. Can I just point out that one thing that always gets me in most RPGs is where they have this sort of cult or sort of guild that's very devoted to their gods and they always come across to me as fanatics. You know the crazy fanatics, like ah, oh, blood for the like, like chaos, basically. Even though chaos are awesome, but it's like blood for the blood god, and that's sort of like the level of development for them. Yep, for these guys, I love how there is a sort of depth to them. You know, there's. He mentions the key, for example, a life by the key, and free from the ever ever crushing weight of the book. You know, it's little things like that that sort of make me sort of happy, uh, sort of almost sort of connect with the groups. Like, oh, you know, we have this belief and the queen that was. I'm like, I want to know more about the queen that was. What is she? What did she do? Who is she? That's one of the cool things I love about that. So, fingers crossed here. Hmm, did it again. 